Alright. I know my last Cthulhu game wasn't actually horror, and it is the Month of Darkness, so... For all of you, I have found a real Cthulhu horror game. Really? Let's discover Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. You know, with a better horror game, I really thought I'd have a better Cthulhu. <laughs> the game opens with a disturbing menu. Now, I wouldn't usually call out a menu, but it called me out first. This game doesn't waste any time in setting a tone, and that tone is that it hates you. The true start of the game enforces that with a cutscene of an insane asylum with an inmate scrawling in his own blood in a notebook before trying to hang himself. The story immediately jumps back six and a half years to when that inmate was a local hero. He'd been solving crime after crime in his job as a private investigator, but his fame had come at a price. The local cult specifically demanded to talk to him to settle their armed standoff. Before you can start to defuse the situation, the cultists open fire, starting a shootout with the officers. Against all reasonable decisions, we run into the house with a crazy cult. Somehow it works for us, and we survive both sides shooting wildly to explore the house. All of the cultists not involved in the shooting have committed suicide via poison, and we follow the screams into the secret basement. Dead bodies are scattered everywhere, but that is nothing on the horror of a body kept alive by machines, his organs surrounding him, each in their own device. You try to figure out what these machines do and it overloads, brutally killing the man. Moving on from what you've done, you find another machine that activates a dimensional door, letting a terrifying creature from another world into ours as you black out from insanity. Time then jumps back forwards to after the first cutscene with a detective in the current era. He can't remember anything that he knew while he was insane or what he did. Bits of what happened in that secret basement are slowly returning to him, but he can't actually remember what he saw. In this new setting, the phone rings with a new case, a missing person who has disappeared from the town of Innsmouth. We reluctantly take the case and head to town on the local bus. This is an Xbox era game, so all the models and motions look a bit unnatural and are set deep into the uncanny valley. But here in the town, this actually serves to the game's strength. The villagers all have bulging veins and stumpy necks and other parts that just simply feel off. The unsettling natures of the models only serves to heighten the unnatural feeling that surrounds the town. Right away, there is no hand-holding in this game. You have to explore the town on your own to find each bit of information and evidence, just like a real private investigator. There's no marker pointing you to your next destination, any kind of a map, so you have to sleuth your way through the streets, sneaking into the shop where the boy worked. The stairs into the basement give out, and you're trapped down there, but you can break out through an abandoned building with skeletons littering the basement and a corpse in a corner. A drunkard back outside has wild stories about the creation of the town and a massacre by demonic creatures, but we're not sure how much of what he says can be believed. He directs us to another house where someone can tell us more about the local cult, the Order of Dagon. When you arrive at the house, the father is at home, but his creepy little girl is and she invites you inside to wait for her father. She says that mommy is locked away upstairs and she's drawing twisted images of her family that depict her mother as some sort of inhuman beast. Investigating the house, you find a locked attic room, and as you check it, something inside smashes against the door, breaking out of the cage. It bowls us down, cutting up our face, and continues downstairs to slaughter its daughter. We come to several hours later, the father returned home and in mourning. He laments the situation but doesn't seem to blame you, giving you the key to his shop and the combination to the safe, begging you to take whatever he has stored there away from this town. You can't escape town yet though, the bus isn't running anymore until tomorrow, so you must stay the night in an inn run by a murderous cannibal. You lock the doors, but part way through the night your magical vision kicks in. See, throughout the game, you can see through eyes that aren't your own. You can see something is tracking you and following you. You see the thoughts of the innkeeper, and now, the villagers coming to kill you. You must spring out of bed and begin the first action set piece of the game. And for us, this will be our last action set piece of the game. I'll explain in a minute, but let's focus on the good points about the game to begin with. Firstly, as discussed, the limitations of the era have been used to full advantage to help create an unsettling atmosphere. The game is also excellent at pushing that atmosphere and dragging the game out, making you explore, lost, and solve everything on your own, but not actually putting you into danger until two hours in. 
The detective work needed in the game can be rather interesting as well. For instance, some objects in the environment are able to be pushed to reveal things or block doorways. You can only recognize what can and can't be moved by keeping an eye out for light scratch marks in the floor. The story is also able to keep a level of mystery despite the player knowing things that the character doesn't, such as, DON'T GO TO INSMITH IF YOU LIKE LIVING. Finally, this set piece is genuinely exciting and tense and can pull in viewers who aren't even playing. And that's everything nice I'm ever going to say about the game again, so I hope you didn't get used to it. This is everything that you need to do in one perfect run in order to continue on through this set piece. Ready? Let's go! Run into room 2 and shut and bolt the door. Run to the bookcase across the room and slide aside. Enter room 3, close and bolt that door. Run to room 4 and close and bolt that door. Run into the hallway door and push the bookcase in front of it. Run back to the window in room 4, push the bookcase out from in front of it. Jump out the window then across to another balcony. Enter the door to a hallway. Turn around, close the door, move it to the side, and push the grandfather clock in front of that door. Move down the hallway as quickly as possible while crouching once at the end. Stop and crouch and run at full speed. Take the door to the left and descend only one floor. Run down the hall, take the next door to your left and ignore the insane screaming man and keep running. Don't miss the med kit in the next room. All doors are locked, so don't check them or you will be caught. Instead, take the window, jump out the fire escape perfectly. Climb the ladder, only the climb will on one side. Crawl across to the plank on the rooftop without falling. Run to and take the ladder straight ahead. Run parallel to the skylights until you find an open hole inside. Climb into the hole, breaking your leg. Use the med kit to heal quickly. Use the ladder point to climb down to the crates below and use the safe point. So the first problem with this set piece is actually the detective points that I was complimenting earlier. They still expect you to see the scratches and instantly analyze and understand your environments with the detective skills, but with the pressure and speed of a chase scene. This does not work, especially since the rooms are not brightly lit. There is no real way to know what to do next other than to try it until you realize where to go next after repeated attempts. Or you could just use walkthrough, but I defy you to actually remember all of that under pressure without someone reading it to you as you go. But there's another bigger problem that you haven't gotten to see yet, so let's take a look at the set piece finally. Run into room 2, bolt door, move bookcase, into room 3, bolt door, into room 4, bolt door, block hallway, unblock window, out window, jump across, into hallway, push clock. Okay, probably just another crash. Nothing new. Let's try this again. Unblock window, out window, jump across hallway, into hallway, push clock. So my settings were wrong. I've corrected them. And now I can show you the rest of the set piece. Jump across, into hallway, push. I'm done! Call me unprofessional. Call me lazy. I don't care, I'm done. This is by no means the first crash, and the sounds are horrific for all the wrong reasons when I interact with a physics object. One crash is well known to happen at a specific spot, but it was hardly the only one. With a total of eight crashes in two and a quarter hours, I have no reason to continue playing this game. Rather, I cannot keep playing since this clock causes a crash without fail. Alright, alright, I can hear what you're saying. The game's also on Xbox, so fine, let's take a look. Xbox, $20. Game, $40. That would be $70 more than I have, so forget it. I'm done. You should be too. And you're a complete disappointment, Cthulhu, so clear off! Ah!